Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Thomas. Tonight we're back here with Paul Vids. This is his sequel to Shed 17 called Project G1. No idea what to expect, but honestly, all I can say is wish me luck, because if it's anything like the first one, oh boy, things are about to get a whole lot worse, maybe. So be sure to like, subscribe for more. Hope you enjoy. Let's go. And I'll set a card from the first video, too, if you haven't seen it. Yeah, like I said, pretty much direct follow-up. Loyalty, honor, and there it is. respect. Sadly. When you lose even one of those, you take something away from those around you. Yep. The ones you love, your friends. We let down those closest to us without ever realizing we'd done so. The people that didn't leave work at night. They weren't the railways for the love of railways. They weren't silenced. They weren't subdued. They just didn't have anything to object to. By the time they realized there was a problem, it too was late. too late. We didn't stifle them. We didn't lock them away. We didn't lie to them. We committed the worst sin of all. Did nothing. We just didn't listen. It's the worst thing you can do. Not listen. On the 6th of October 2015, yeah, the world was reintroduced to the horrors and suffering that began on a small island off the northwest coast of England. I don't think the documentary showed anything we didn't already know. Really? People had just become desensitized to what had happened to Thomas and his friends. The reaction, or rather, Overreaction began straight away. <laughs> this young man in the USA had become so traumatized by Shed 17, he had memorized all the dialogue and would do nothing but watch the program in a loop, mouthing the words. The town was buzzing with news of her pregnancy. He would later be taken away to a psychiatric unit. Many viewers would be offered similar treatment, often being asked to illustrate what scared them She's the and confronting it as a successful therapy. This That's young man the... began making his own model railway stories as a form of treatment. Soon many of these people would be allowed limited access to the outside world even beginning to form social connections to people yeah. and in some cases from form friendships. Look at this. After the Thomas incident became public, the tourist trade began to dry up. People stopped coming to Sodor for biofusion operations and so there were massive layoffs on the railway itself. Oof. Numerous attempts yeah, were made to salvage the tourist trade on Sodor. Finally, in a last ditch attempt, the railway was promoted with an ill-judged celebrity endorsement. On the train. But it wouldn't just be young people suffering. Many would suffer trauma in their own way, both human and biofused. Traumatizing. With the documentary came the public outcry Heartlight and the destroyed. media's need for a scapegoat. The Gertz family were in hiding. The fat c had vanished with all his money. And there I was, in full public view, being blamed for I'm the sorry. whole thing. Do you want to apologize, person? You frankly you should know better than that. <laughs> oh, he shat himself. I was finally given the chance to tell my side of the story on national television. Tell people what actually happened and acquit myself in the eyes of the public. Mr. Hartley, 
Are you to blame for the events on Soldar Island? Well, let me tell you. I am not. I am totally to blame for what happened wow, to Thomas and all his friends, and I do it again tomorrow. Wow, didn't even try. Last time I go on Channel 4, That's a but the public outcry would bring an anonymous whistleblower mm -hmm. out into the light. Someone who would reveal more facts about the events on Sodor Island, both before and after the Thomas incident. Dang. I worked closely on the television series in the early 80s. So I was around the engines at all times. Hey. It's only now, after I can't make a difference to those engines' lives, that I've heroically decided to speak. As the government Fire. finally relented and shut down the whole biofusion operation on That's Sodor, a, a tragic dilemma faced the scientists. Ugh. Some people were still in the biofusion process. Being in process is the last place anyone wants to be. They had to complete their procedures quickly, or they'd be left to die. That Oof. meant turning them into the simplest form of life that existed. <laughs> Trucks, oh. particularly the faceless ones, rarely had the brain capacity to retain long-term memory. Damn. They were the lucky ones. I can't lucky. imagine a worse hell than being a truck. Fortunately, most of them didn't live long. <laughs> Biological organs' exposure to the open sentence. world meant an increased risk of infection and Thank slow, you. painful death. Ugh. Fearing being shut yeah. away forever, some trains would seek opportunity elsewhere. Chris Duck Dixon and Oliver Surname's dream was to work on the famous Sodor Railway. They were childhood friends who shared the same love of trains. They'd made a pact to become engines. Sadly, it came too late. Ouch. The ban on biofusion came into effect just after Oliver and Duck were looking forward to working on the railway. When it looked as though they would be locked away forever, the Japan Railway Group offered them work on their railway. Duck and Oliver jumped at the chance. The travel was paid for by the Japanese railway and they couldn't wait to be there. Unfortunately, arriving in Tokyo, Duck and Oliver would find that, under Japanese law, they weren't recognised as human beings, and so had no rights at all. They would Oof. soon learn their true fate. Uh oh. Steam. Now what? Steam engine Fisto. Oh boy. This ain't gonna help. They, along with other engines unfortunate enough to fall into this trap, were to take part in a sick pay-per-view event. <laughs> that one guy with the destroy my childish shit. Fitted with pneumatic joints, stabilizers and supports, they were ready for the main event.
They both knew this was a battle to the death, so they had to put their friendship aside. There was only one way to survive. Kill the other. Their engines would jeez or them like they're pretty much stuck in a rock in a hard place it was either get locked up or battle to the death now in japan good lord it makes you wonder was shed 17 even worth it at this point like they exposed it but now looks what's going on god i mean like i said i know it's like you said it was before the or after the thomas incident so yeesh welcome opportunities offered by the British government. The British government had banned the use of biofusion publicly, but, but not couldn't selling. ignore the military opportunities. Selling war to the world was too profitable. Hit Logistics was the military contractor secretly tasked with continuing the work Sodor research had begun. The first oh task boy. was finding as many engines as possible. Biofuse oh material had become rare, and Hitler Sticks immediately recruited people to hunt down as many decommissioned engines as possible. One mm. was an old colleague we all called friend. Ruth. Even when he was being interviewed oh, for the Shed 17 documentary, he was Seriously? neck deep in secret government research. Damn. His biggest dream was much more sinister. G1. Project G1 was Professor Owen Ruth's dream. The breaking down of biofused matter to their very cells, and then deprogramming them. Engine remains being reused to form anything they wanted. So basically a bio weapon. ID Project. These cells have their DNA instructions removed. Biofused stem cells, which can then adapt and assume any form necessary. It is for this purpose we have begun making extensive research into twins. Like twins? Annie Clarabella and Kevin Diesel had met as real enthusiasts, fallen in love mm -hmm. and gotten married within weeks of meeting. Huh. The next That's step fast. in their eyes was to become biofused. It was the most romantic thing in their eyes. He would become an engine, she a coach and they would ride the rails together. Kevin became his namesake, a diesel. sleek black diesel engine. It was Annie's operation where things didn't go to plan. As oh. Annie's cells were being reprogrammed, they split in the early stages of the operation, and two coaches were created. Although these twins were far from identical, People started to notice just how many twins were being created on the island, hmm. but the questions were brushed off or ignored. Really? In an effort to deflect criticism, Annie and Clarabelle, the first two biofused coaches, were put into service straight away. Oh Everyone was very excited. No one seemed to ask about where all the organic parts were in a coach. All about those they luxurious, expensive, wall. pink leather furnishings. Oh! Oh, God. <laughs> oh, 
without the blood bath. I don't even want to tell you what they found in the toilets. Oh, digestive track. Oh, that's, that's gross. Following this disaster, mm -hmm. Annie and Clarabelle would be kept out of the public gaze. Oof. One would stay with her husband, the other sent away to hit logistics. Diesel was forced to no, make a heartbreaking choice. Which of these ladies to spend the rest of his life with? Oh. It must have taken him all of two seconds. Oh, Annie. For Annie, a lifetime with her husband, hidden away from the public gaze. They For Clarabelle, the safety and care of hit logistics. <laughs> Oof. Hit Logistics weren't just interested in how twins were created. Hmm? It was the abilities they had because of it. Oh. The telepathic links between twin engines was found to be incredibly powerful. Oh boy. The psychic links found in natural twins is profoundly more powerful in biofused vehicles. Hmm. Of course, essentially, these are the same person. Hmm. Hit Logistics would use what they had learnt to work on duplication. A volunteer soldier could be biofused exponentially, creating copies of those cells. Think of it! A willing human participant, not just controlling a weapon, but becoming the weapon. Uh, can Able hold to the... react to danger and orders in a fraction of the time. To maintain the secrecy of these illegal experiments, the soldiers' faces would be covered up, so that the only giveaway was a cry of discomfort when a vehicle was damaged or a tank shell was fired. I guess they haven't got used to the recording yet. Ouch. That sucks, bro. Professor Ruth wanted to take these experiments further. Uh, to duplicate his deprogrammed cells to assimilate any biofused matter it made contact with, to assume mm. any form of any size. Think of the possibilities. A weapon dropped into a city that can take any form it wishes and adapt any organic material it finds. Whole communities of people removed and left empty for occupation. Stage uh, 1 is the secure storage of biofuels genetic matter in stasis. Stage 2 will involve the release of this material, in secure conditions of course. To release this material in an uncontrolled state would be disastrous. Why there was nothing it? they wouldn't try in that place, even experimenting with mirrors. Mirrors? As well as mirror testing, work on twins would become more extreme to uh -oh. test just how far the telekinetic link in biofused matter would go. Oh. For Wait, one set of twins, you? the link would go too far. Oh god. Whilst unseen horrors were administered on Donald, the doctors and specialists at Hit Logistics could observe in full detail the torture as an unbreakable bond with his twin would tear Douglas apart. Hit logistics would also be seen as a welcome refuge from another threat on Sodor. Get to that one in a bit, but geez, that's a sanctuary for some of these guys? Honestly, I think I would have just preferred, like, the cart life at this point. <laughs> like, at least I go out faster, you know? Like, sheesh. Not fun. I don't know, just saying. I don't think there's a happy ending for these biofused engineering engines at this rate. Like, how else do you explain it, right? <sighs> Alright, let's see what happened on Soldor, Soldor now. Whew. Steamies, we called them. Oh, they started out as rail enthusiasts, train spotters. Mm -hmm. They loved engines, 
But where was the arm in that? But when living engines were introduced on Sodor, they couldn't get here fast enough. Most were seen as enthusiastic volunteers on the railway, some getting permanent jobs. Hmm. Now the Steamy's obsession with engines had a new, darker place to vent their frustrations. James was a favourite engine. Sometimes every night for weeks, they'd gather at the turntable and play a spin the engine. Jeez. Why? God, poor James. Welcome to the show, no luck in, well, apparently behind the scenes. Nice. This security footage, hidden by Sodor Research until now, shows Gordon desperately pretending he couldn't fit on the turntable. But James was always the favourite, Break. even to the television writers. James as driver and fireman were feeling him all over. Yeah. But I had nothing to do with any of that business. Not after the first time. Really? With the closure of the railways, the engines were hidden away, and the steamies would go underground and bide their time. And it would be 30 oh, no, years and a new documentary before Jeez, anyone cared. Before anyone asked, why did this happen? Where were the engines? And what can we do about any of it? With protests aimed at the government and hit logistics, the destruction of the evidence was speeded up. Unnecessary going? engines would be incinerated quickly and brutally. Oh. As easy as signing a form, ticking a box, or waving a flag, the engines we knew and loved were murdered in the most efficient way possible. But it would be the most insignificant death of all that would have the most devastating effect. Not any transport at hit logistics, mm -hmm. but really? the one nobody witnessed, except no? for one. Oh. oh, Diesel and Annabelle. They'd spent 30 years together, just looking into each other's eyes, forgotten by us all, and as happy as any of us could ever hope to be. As Clarabelle was disposed of, no one but Diesel knew what happened to her twin, nearly 20 miles yeah. away. Oh, Manny, my love, what's wrong? What's the matter? What's happening? Annie, please, stay with me. Please. I can't go. <laughs> stay, stay with me. Stay with me. No, 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 no! Oh, right in the eyes and mouth. wasn't over for Diesel. He had to get out. As oh, terrible see. as seeing his wife perish was, the worst was yet to come. No. 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 Oh, I'm gonna drive her a body. Sorry, I'm really surprised they kept like the ants in some of the cases. No, 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 no.
can't blame him. Probably want that too. This is all your fault. You'll never laugh at me again. Oh boy. The rights of biofused engines will be ignored no more. The secrets of Sodor will be revealed. The state-sponsored torture of engines must be stopped. Diesel would form the Sodor Liberation Front. His dream was to make Sodor Island a home for engines and other transport, free from the tyranny of human beings. And we will not stop until the island of Sodor is recognized as a refuge for all engines. Meanwhile... I mean, to be fair, like, considering how they were treated with, you know, the boxing, the experimentations, I'd probably focus on that one too. Let's just hope he gets it sooner or later, otherwise... Well, good luck. The remains of the engines will be disposed of. The remains at Hit Logistics will be moved off-site to a quarry in the Blue Mountains of Sodor. Six thousand pounds of desiccated biofused matter. Its location, the real mystery. And tending to this top secret site was the only engine in the UK still being illegally operated. Oh, we can get them to do pretty much anything we want to. Uh, you know, a bit of a... Uh... This undercover footage reveals how Ferdinand was being forced to work, controlled by his addiction to Welsh yeah, coal. Right. Yeah, we use Welsh coal to get the weaker engines started up, really? to give some engines a kick when they were struggling to get up in oh, the wow. morning. We never realised all the effects it was having on oh, some yeah. engines. Hey. Here, here they come, man. No. What are you looking at me for? Oh, let's all look at a funny engine. Is that right? Let's all look at a funny engine. You go look at the funny engine. Welsh Call acted as a narcotic on the engines. Damn, Prolonged really. use would lead to addiction and dependency. Uh, what was it? <laughs> that was right. Uh, I think he's As Welsh died. coal addiction became a bigger and bigger problem, dependency increased on the set of the television series. No, you'll never win first prize, Percy moaned. Don't worry, Percy. Thomas puffed. All I need is a good watchdog. One morning, Gordon was in the yard taking on a large supply of coal. <laughs> See the guys. That's the third load of coal you've had today, Gordon. Some might say you're being rather greedy. Oh boy. Increasingly, engines would cause what appeared to be accidents, but in fact were attempts to get exposed to Welsh coal. But prolonged use would result in permanent brain damage. Dealers on the set, violence among the actors. We knew oh. there were a problem when Gordon started talking to the voice in his head. Really? Telling him oh. to do things. Bad things. Yes, said Gordon, I will. Oh. oh. Yikes. Hit Logistics oh. would later take Welsh coal research to its natural conclusion. Huh. High yeah, speed steam like engines would be pushed to their limits on high doses of the coal. That one's dead, ain't he? As pressure from the media increased, and fearing more bad press, Project G1 was put on hold, its future uncertain. Stage 1 stored away in what Professor Ruth called a controlled environment. Mm. He dug his own grave, appearing in that documentary, as well as working at Hit Logistics. But he didn't see anything wrong in that. Oh and so, just like everyone else, he blamed me. For everything, even Smudger. Smudger's story had been a children's favourite around the world. Smudger worked on the Mid Sodor Railway. The mine the engines worked on didn't make much, but it was enough to keep them going. Smudger was moved there because of his faults. His wheel alignment was off, meaning he'd come off the rails too often. Unfortunately, the cash strapped mine company couldn't afford the repairs. Their solution would be barbaric. 
How bad? Oh. They dismembered him, taking away his wheels and opening him up. The butchers turned him into a steam generator. Shut off from all sensation, Smudger powered the mind for many years. Alone with his thoughts, he would slowly lose his mind. When business dried up, do you think they come back for Smudger? Let me guess, no. Did the L. He were left there for years. Everyone had forgotten him. In a way, it would have been it's better worse. for Smudger if he'd been forgotten forever. Sadly, for Smudger, salvation would arrive, but in the form of hit logistics. Professor Roof was still eager to find as much biofused material as he could. But Smudger had changed over time. Smudger had remained in the same place for nearly 30 years. His organic parts were no longer just part of a steam engine. Oh, they shed. had become shed. Smudger and the shed were one and the same. They couldn't be wait, removed. Wait, no, no, please, wait, no, please, no. Oh, God, no, 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 please, wait, oh, no, no, please, no, God, no. This would be the final act of hit logistics, closing down all their research and destroying evidence. Soon, there would be nothing left to even prove their existence. That was what they hoped. They didn't count on one final desperate act. Hmm? A crane! Same guy, I think? Cranky had been driven mad by all the things he'd seen working for the, the government. Scream he did, not the surprised. worst thing was having to keep it quiet for all those years. Mm. Unfortunately, Cranky's genetic structure meant he couldn't turn around fully, not without breaking the entire circulatory system to his head. Effectively, mm. he was condemning himself to a painful death. Like that. Hi, Cranky. Thanks. God. I believe Cranky knew the consequences, and he knew it had to be done. Okay. But his wouldn't be the only sacrifice that day. Huh? Wait, what do you mean? Hey, come in, Diesel! Oh, oh I don't believe he was evil, or that he wanted to kill anyone. He just wanted to show the world what the government was trying to cover up. He didn't know what was in there, or the damage he'd do. I don't think any of us did. Yep, that's Project G1. Diesel had veered into the now secured stasis container of Project G Stage 1. Opening it up and allowing the deprogrammed biofused matter to assimilate any matter it wished, and to take on any form it wished. I looked at the mirror, lads. Lads! Any biofused engines in there didn't stand a chance. They were dragged into the canister. And then we all got to see it in its natural state.
severity of the situation sunk in, government forces were deployed. This would be the only line of defence. But Project G1 was more than capable of defending itself and would take whatever action was necessary. clear where its goal was. More biofuse cells, more life, more engines. It had to assimilate cells to grow, to live, to spread. Blue Mountain Quarry. The site of thousands of tons of dead, desiccated biofuse matter, hidden from the outside world. Yeah. A rich source of matter which would make Project G1 indestructible. It were drawn here to be with its own kind, the last vestiges of Sodor's engines. It was trying to find peace. Realising Project G1's destination and intent, the military provided it with what it was looking for. fate everyone had asked about for years. Thomas. Still okay? Twenty-eight operations to try and reconstruct him as a human being. He had remained behind closed doors, unwilling Oof. until now to show the world the monster he had become. Just that monster. wasn't the Thomas I knew. That wasn't an engine or a human. It were a creature mutilated by surgeons and engineers alike. Unable to react to the outside world at this stage, Thomas was the last chance the military had to stop Project G1. Finally, the nightmare were over. Thomas had found the remains of his friends. His friends had found him. Sodor Island's favourite sons would finally be at no! what? Rock slide. The mystery of the Blue Mountain had been solved. 
6,000 tons of desiccated, dehumanized biofuse matter hidden in full view. And now used as a weapon. It's hardly go up. This was the military's plan all along. There was never any intention to allow them some kind of peace. And with that, Thomas lost his only link to the past. Now all that's left is his reanimated pneumatic body, a confused mind that lost everything. With his past the only thing left to torment him, Thomas decided to leave. He'd seen everything. The last people he trusted had abandoned him, but I was still here to tell his story. After all the betrayal, disloyalty and torment, I could still say I were his only friend. The only person who hadn't abandoned him. I could hold my head up high and say, I was... <laughs> What he gets, you know. Okay, 2021 solar was officially recognized. Biofuel is only compound. Okay, it's some referendums now. Okay, 2032. Referendums called on that whether or not leave the UK or hey. Okay. Ninety percent. The engines of solar are avoided to leave. <sighs> yeah, fair enough. I probably leave too at this point. All diplomatic ties between Sordoland and the United Kingdom were cut off. Since then, no one has set foot on Sordor, no biofused engine has made contact with the outside world. Again, not surprised. That's what they get for mistreating him so much. Okay. Case, can you hear me, Case? Can you hear me, Case? Stay with me now. Stay with me now. Okay, we have to shock him. 
Claire! That will not be necessary. Who, who are you? Ruth! Who is this oh. man? What's he doing here? This man is in you, our you, care. You have no right to be here. Relax, Mr. Hartley. You are in our capable hands now. Well, crap. Well, this seems... This is a bad fate for Hartley, huh? Biofusion. Uh-oh. going on that turn into well mr artley top hat you've been quite the fawn in our side the wrench in our works the leaves on our rails never want to shy away from the media were you mr artley always another revelation about your faithful employer. Never a care for the trouble you caused, the innovations you've hampered, initiatives you've stalled, the jobs you've lost, the challenges to this island's human supremacy. Well, we've got a very special place for you here. Somewhere you can't open your big mouth or interfere anymore. And don't worry, Mr. Hartley. You're among friends here. This is where everyone ends up once they've become troublesome. Yikes, that was messed up. And I think there's actually a bit more to this story. Hang on, wait, actually, might as well let the clips play out. There's a little more, I think. Hold on, listen. Sorry, just had to back it up. There's more to it. Just watch. Next week, Colonel Baba, his bloodthirsty rise to power the genocide of the Rhinoceros Kingdom, and his ultimate demise at the hands of his own people. Yeah. I think I'll just let it play out. That's a case. <laughs> yeah, Paul did a lot. I don't know about this. Maybe we shouldn't be here. Yeah, come on. No one's even been here in like 50 years. I, I know, but these warning signs are here for a reason. Look, no one's actually seen an engine over there for ages. It'll be fine. What are you worrying about? I mean, what could happen? That? Run! Uh, uh, no! Ooh. Yeah! Ah! Well, that happened.
happened? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Ooh, nasty vid. Okay. Well, safe to say we could get that one off the list. So, hope you enjoyed that one. Till next time, like, subscribe for more. Sorry for any trauma. Adios.